Well, I spent the morning uh, working on the 15 meter halfway vertical. And we've got the SWR down to 1.03 at 21.23 megahertz. We're uh, better than 2 to 1 across the band, so all is good. I'll show you the setup here. There's the uh, current ballon. And then we've got our temporary connection uh, to the ladder line matching section. And the ladder line goes on up there to the lug connector, which then connects to the radiator. In this video, I'll be showing you how to fabricate a quarter wave matching section to get from 50 ohms up to the high impedance of the radiator. I will also provide some initial dimensions for getting you started to create your own halfway verticals for the 10, 15, and 20 meter bands. Halfway verticals are really great antennas. They only require one mounting point. They've got a very low angle of radiation, which is excellent for DX work. And uh, the maximum point of radiation is well above ground versus a uh, quarter wave vertical, which has a radiation point right at ground level. And you don't require any ground radials and their associated ground losses, so it makes for a very convenient antenna to put up in the backcountry for portable operation. Everyone's familiar with a horizontal dipole, which is a half wavelength long, and we've got the highest voltage at the ends of each one of the radiators. So what we do is we're going to flip that over on its end to make a vertical dipole, uh, also with 50 ohms, but it's very difficult or awkward to feed a vertical dipole. So the problem we need to solve is to feed that half wave radiator from the bottom where we have a very high impedance uh, and very high voltages. So that's what we're going to do. So let's talk a little bit about how we get that match. Uh, here we've got our vertical half wave radiator and uh, there's a plot of the maximum voltages that are along that radiator. So you can see that at the ends we've got very high voltages. So the way we get the match is we use a resonant quarter wave matching section which we have shorted at one end and open at the other. And for our practical purposes, we use 450 ohm window line, and uh, I like to call it ladder line, but uh, window line or ladder line are both good terms for it. Uh, this uh, quarter wave matching section, we know since it's got a short at one end, has uh, zero voltage here, and at the other end, that's where the highest voltages are, so that corresponds with the highest impedances. So that's uh, how a resonant core wave matching section is used uh, to match to the high impedance of the uh, half wave radiator. Now, since we have zero ohms here at the end and a very high impedance here, we need to find a point somewhere along this 450 ohm window line where the impedance is a good match for our HF transceiver or looking for 50 ohms. So. Uh, we actually can uh, go back and forth on this transmission line and find a point where we have 50 ohms. So that's the whole concept of getting this match uh, using a quarter wave resonant uh, matching section. You could use the quarter wave matching section to get to 50 ohms and not have a short at the end, but I found that the short uh, reduces the variability of uh, what you see uh, looking down the coax toward the transceiver. It, it provides a finite impedance reference point of zero ohms. It also eliminates any static buildup because the uh, transceiver will see uh, DC short to ground. So that's uh, uh, also an advantage with today's uh, very sensitive receiver front ends. Here are some of the tools that you'll need for getting your quarter wave matching section to work properly. Uh, first of all, uh, you'll need a, a good uh, tape measure, and I really like this uh, fabric style. Uh, the uh, nice thing about this is that you can lay it right up against the uh, ladder line and get a good accurate measurement of, uh, of the length. And uh, I've gone metric completely because it's a lot easier to do antenna calculations 
uh, metrically rather than trying to convert inches and feet and oh it's just just gets to be a hassle but uh, none of that uh, conversion is necessary if you if you go metric so get yourself a nice uh, oh this is a 30 meter uh, fabric uh, tape measure it's uh, really really useful and uh, you can make fast progress on measurements to trim your uh, cable uh, your ladder line to the correct length and uh, also to expose the conductors you'll you'll need to have a, a good pair of wire cutters to cut it to length and then uh, I use an exacto knife to uh, bear the uh, sections of uh, ladder line uh, for connection to the uh, tap uh, for the 50 ohm uh, input point and uh, you have to be careful that you don't scratch the conductors with the X-Acto knife but uh, if you go patiently you can uh, expose that uh, inner copper very easily. Uh, another thing that you're going to need is a uh, uh, common uh, mode current choke and uh, this is just uh, 10 to 14 uh, turns of RG58 coax that are wound on a, on a toroid and uh, I, what I do is I just have a short uh, pigtail here with uh, some small alligator clips, one for the ground and one for the center conductor. And uh, that uh, I use for initial work to uh, find out how the ladder line and the halfway vertical perform. So I just connect them like that temporarily. Uh, and then once you find, uh, find out what works, then uh, you can go ahead and solder them uh, permanently. But uh, this is a, a really good method for iterating the, the length from the uh, short to the uh, optimum 50 ohm tap point of your ladder line. So you'll need those. And oh, on the other end of this, uh, I just put about six or seven feet of uh, coax with a uh, uh, connector PL259 on the end of it which you then can connect to your uh, analyzer. Uh, this is the rig expert and I really like this uh, uh, this uh, uh, product. It's got a very easy to use user inter interface. It's got the resistance and reactance charts which uh, we need to use for our purposes and uh, we'll be using this when we actually trim the ladder line uh, quarter wave matching section. Uh, you can use uh, a nano VNA. I have used those, but uh, they are very awkward to use, and the displays do not work hardly at all in sunlight. So I uh, ended up breaking down and buying a rig expert. And I couldn't be happier. I wish I wouldn't have uh, wasted the money on the on the nano VNA. Although it makes a nice bench tool, but uh, for doing antenna work, a good uh, uh, product like the rig expert. Uh, AA55 zoom is, is, is really better. Okay, so that's some of the tools and uh, things that you'll need. So let's uh, continue on here. Okay, let me show you my setup here. Uh, I've got a fiberglass rod that's inserted into a uh, stealthy mast holder from QST magazine. All it is is a piece of PVC and concrete in the ground. And then that uh, rod is about, uh, I guess that's about eight feet tall, so the top of the mast ends up being about seven feet above the ground. Uh, this is the the end of the matching section, so the <coughs> test setup is over here. You can see we've connected to our tap point with the alligator clips, and we've got the uh, current mode choke right there. And we've got the, the rig expert at the ready. We're going to be using the resistance reactance function of our analyzer. And uh, we'll go ahead and do an initial scan here of our uh, matching section, which we cut a little bit on the long side. So here we can see it's resonant at 20.522 megahertz. And uh, the blue line right there uh, is the one we're interested in. So we want to find out when the inductive reactance and the capacitive reactance uh, go through zero. So that's what we're looking for. That will denote the resonance. Now the uh, 
The Rig Expert AA55 is nice in that it actually gives you the resonant frequency when you're in this mode, so you can see that there at the bottom of the display. So now we're going to be carefully cutting the end of the matching section and uh, doing another scan. And um, we're uh, going to try to get that resonant frequency to be at the uh, top of the frequency band of interest. Uh, that seems to work out the best. So we'll slowly cut uh, small sections of the uh, transmission line until we get the resonance, resonant frequency to where we want it to be. Here is another example of a matching section that I was uh, building for a new uh, 20 meter vertical. And uh, I cut the uh, matching section a half meter uh, longer than uh, my initial parameters that I expect. So here I am uh, cutting off five to eight centimeter sections of it and uh, doing rescans uh, of the uh, resonant frequency. So here we're at 13.991 megahertz, uh, and I'm over there cutting off about an eight centimeter uh, piece off of the open end. And uh, once I get that uh, small section of uh, line cut off, I uh, go ahead and do another scan. Yeah, there's the piece I took out. Now the uh, this scan ended up being at 14.237 megahertz, which is uh, exactly where we want to be. So uh, once we get it to the top of the band, we'll call that good enough. Uh, so at this point, uh, we're ready to uh, do some testing uh, with a with a radiator attached. Uh, here's a chart of uh, the response. Uh, actually measured the uh, the uh, window line as I cut it, so you can see what the sensitivity is uh, for how much you cut. Once I added the radiator, we had a, a very good SWR at the top of the band. We could probably add a little bit of extra length to the radiator, but uh, I think uh, for all practical purposes, this ended up pretty well. Here are some of the dimensions that have worked very well in my work with the half wave vertical. At the top of this chart, we've got the uh, matching section length in meters. We've got the tap position from the short. And then we have the uh, frequency of zero phase shown as well. The radiator, radiator length is next. And then uh, the height that it's mounted uh, above the ground is shown. And it will also uh, show you the frequency of the uh, best VSWR. So hopefully these will get you on your way to building your halfway vertical. The matching section length and the position of the tap from the shard are the most critical elements in this antenna design. I've struggled a little bit on how to uh, mount the current choke, so I finally just uh, zip-tied it to the uh, shorted end of the matching section, and this worked out really well on the 20 meter antenna, so I thought I'd pass along the idea here. Here is a summary of the antenna from the top to the bottom. I use masking tape to attach the insulated antenna wire to the telescoping pole, as it is easy to remove with experimental or portable setups. A removable zip tie is used at the bottom of the radiator and at the top of the ladder line matching section to remove any mechanical strain. And I use a handy splicer block to connect the matching section and the radiator together. This end of the matching section where it connects to the radiator needs to be kept well out of reach of humans and pets due to the high voltages involved. On 20 meters, I use a long fiberglass pole to ensure the junction is elevated enough and to ensure effective antenna operation. The cap can be removed from the bottom of the telescoping pole so that you can slide the fiberglass pole inside the telescoping mast. A small right angle bracket can be hose clamped to the pole at the desired insertion depth to keep the telescoping pole from sliding down. There are many ways to support the antenna assembly, 
and one method is to slide a galvanized water pipe into a handy mast holder in the ground. You can then erect the entire antenna assembly and slide it over the galvanized pipe. Here I am lifting the entire antenna assembly and I put it over the galvanized pipe. At this point uh, the antenna is up and I'm ready to connect my rig up to the coax coming from the current ballon. Back in the 1970s, I built a pair of two half waves and phase antennas designed by Ed Tilton W1HDQ for repeater use in Upper Michigan. It seems I have come full circle on this HF half wave vertical project, and I hope you have as much fun working with these types of antennas as I have. I will include some reference material on the remainder of this video, and please do ask questions or provide comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you on the bands.